Hello, I'm Dr. Ailey Kalapilla from Emory University. In this National HIV Curriculum mini lecture, I'm going to provide you with a brief summary on the latest updates related to the antifungal treatment of cryptococcal disease for people living with HIV. So this will be the outline of my talk. I will start by reviewing the July 2021 updates in the antifungal management of cryptococcal meningitis. After that, we will look at treatment of non-central nervous system cryptococcosis, followed by management of asymptomatic cryptococcal antigenemia. Notably, this guideline update will not address management of two very important issues that are not directly related to antifungal therapy, that is management of increased intracranial pressure in those with meningitis and timing of initiation of antiretroviral therapy in persons with cryptococcal disease. Now, let's dive into treatment of cryptococcal meningitis. So the treatment of cryptococcal meningitis is divided into three phases. First, a patient will need to receive induction therapy, and typically this should be administered for at least two weeks until there's sterilization of the CSF culture and the patient has clinical improvement. Now, provided the CSF culture remains negative, the patient can then receive the consolidation antimicrobial therapy, which is considered the second phase, and this should be administered for a minimum of eight weeks. Finally, the patient will receive the third and final phase, which is a maintenance antifungal regimen, for at least a year. Now let's take a deeper dive into these three phases of cryptococcal meningitis treatment. Now according to the Opportunistic Infection Guidelines, the preferred induction therapy for cryptococcal meningitis consists of at least two weeks of intravenous amphotericin B plus oral flucytosine. Now ideally you would use liposomal formulation of amphotericin B here to minimize renal toxicity, but if it is not available then amphotericin B deoxycholate is also an option under the preferred induction antifungal therapy guidance. Importantly, the updated cryptococcal disease guidelines have made no changes to the recommendation for induction therapy. So moving on to consolidation therapy, now this is where the main updates to cryptococcal meningitis treatment were made in the July 2021 update of the OI guidelines. So as was previously recommended, a lumbar puncture and repeat CSF culture should be performed after two weeks of induction therapy to document sterilization of the CSF. At that point, clinically stable patients can be switched to consolidation therapy while awaiting CSF culture results. The old guidelines recommended 400 mg of once daily oral fluconazole for consolidation therapy. The new guideline recommendations is to use 800 mg of fluconazole once a day for consolidation therapy. There is a caveat here that the fluconazole dose for consolidation can be decreased to 400 mg provided the CSF cultures after induction are negative and the patient is clinically stable. Also note that CSF fungal cultures are typically incubated for 3 to 4 weeks. So, practically speaking, most people will receive the higher dose of 800 mg for at least 3 to 4 weeks. The duration of consolidation therapy is recommended to be 8 weeks from the time of negative CSF cultures. So, another change in cryptococcal meningitis management is the recommendation on what to do if CSF fungal cultures remain positive even after 2 weeks of induction therapy. Now, in the past, many providers in the United States would choose to prolong induction therapy. However, now the guidelines state that if the patient is clinically stable, then the amphob and flucytosine can be discontinued after two weeks and the patient can be transitioned to high-dose oral fluconazole that is 1,200 mg to be taken once a day. Of course, if the patient is unstable, then amphob and flucytosine should be continued. Regardless, an LP should be repeated here two weeks later, again looking for sterilization of CSF. In all of these situations, the consolidation therapy duration is eight weeks from the time of negative CSF cultures. 
So the recommendation to use a daily dose of 800 milligrams rather than 400 milligrams of fluconazole consolidation therapy is based on clinical trial data that showed that using 400 milligrams of fluconazole once a day for consolidation led to breakthrough infection. Another phase two trial of treatment found that relapses were also more frequent in patients receiving 400 milligrams per day of fluconazole compared to those receiving 800 milligrams daily. Other studies have demonstrated that the antifungal activity of fluconazole in CSF of patients with cryptococcal meningitis increases linearly with increasing doses of the drug. So, based on these data, the OI guidelines were then updated to reflect that in clinically stable patients, the dose of fluconazole for consolidation therapy should be 800 mg per day until CSF cultures are known to be sterile and ART is initiated, at which point the dose can be decreased. Oral fluconazole of 200 mg per day is then used for maintenance treatment and should be continued at least until one year from initiation of antifungal therapy. This was also not changed with the guideline update. So this is a review of what we just went over. Treatment of cryptococcal meningitis consists of three phases. First, for induction therapy, an amphotericin B formulation given intravenously combined with oral flucytosine is recommended, and the duration for this is usually at least two weeks. A lumbar puncture and repeat CSF culture should be performed after two weeks of induction therapy to document sterilization of CSF. At that point, clinically stable patients may be switched to consolidation therapy while awaiting CSF culture results. The new guideline recommendations for consolidation therapy are to use 800 mg of fluconazole once a day, with the option to decrease the dose to 400 mg daily fluconazole if the CSF culture were to remain negative. If the CSF culture is positive but the patient is clinically stable, then the dose of fluconazole can be increased to 1200 mg once a day and the LP should be repeated again in two weeks. In general, consolidation antifungal therapy should be given for eight weeks from the time of negative CSF cultures. And then finally, maintenance antifungal treatment consists of 200 mg of once daily oral fluconazole, which can be given for at least a year after consolidation. Now, let's go over management of non-central nervous system cryptococcal disease. The cryptococcal opportunistic infection guideline updates also included clarifications on how to manage non-central nervous system cryptococcal disease. First, it is incredibly important to remember here that all patients with cryptococcal antigenemia so really anyone with a positive serum cryptococcal antigen should have their CSF sample to rule out central nervous system disease. For those individuals who have no evidence of CNS disease, but who have extrapulmonary, pulmonary, or asymptomatic antigenemia with a serum cryptococcal antigen LFA titer of greater than or equal to 1 to 640, the guidelines recommend using the same treatment as you would for cryptococcal meningitis. The reason this is recommended is because high cryptococcal antigen titers are associated with progression to neurological involvement with fluconazole monotherapy. So these are the folks where you would pursue induction, consolidation, and maintenance treatment as outlined in the previous slides with the exception that you do not need to document negative CSF cultures since these individuals do not have CNS disease. For those patients without central nervous system disease who have isolated pulmonary disease or isolated cryptococcal antigenemia, and they have a serum cryptococcal antigen LFA titer less than or equal to 1 to 320, the guidelines recommend a treatment with 400 to 800 milligrams of daily fluconazole for about 10 weeks, followed by a maintenance of 200 milligrams of fluconazole daily in addition to effective combination antiretroviral therapy. So, in review, treatment of cryptococcal meningitis consists of induction, consolidation, and maintenance antifungal therapy. The main updates to the antifungal management of cryptococcal meningitis treatment are related to consolidation dosing. Specifically, 
consolidation treatment fluconazole dosing has been increased to 800 mg a day until CSF cultures are negative and then the dose can be decreased to 400 mg daily. If a clinically stabled patient's CSF fungal culture are positive after induction therapy, then the guidelines recommend that the fluconazole dose to be increased to 1200 mg daily with a repeat lumbar puncture in two weeks. For non-CNS cryptococcal disease, which includes pulmonary disease or isolated asymptomatic antigenemia, the guidelines give specific treatment recommendations now based on the antigen titer. So higher cryptoantigen titers, that is greater than or equal to 1 to 640, should be treated in the same way as cryptococcal meningitis. And lower titers, so less than or equal to 1 to 320, can be treated with fluconazole monotherapy alone. The production of this National HIV Curriculum mini-lecture was supported by funding from the Health Resources and Services Administration.